Hello and welcome to chapter 8, Human Population. So uh, by the end of this presentation, you're going to basically want to have a good understanding of human population. So basically everything that covers um, the amount of people on this planet, uh, the problems associated that with that, uh, including environmental issues, obviously, uh, the distribution of that population, and things along those lines. All right, let's get into it. Okay, the human population is growing rapidly. So something to keep in mind is that even if the growth rate of a large population remains somewhat steady, the population is still going to grow. So let's look down at this graphic here. So basically the graph here is you can read these little bullets. I'm not going to read them, but you can glance. I'm going to explain. So basically uh, this graph talks about how uh, the growth has been very, very concentrated in recent years. So as you can see from this starts in the 1400s. So in the 1400s uh, through probably the 1900s, it's kind of like a very slow, steady, gradual thing. But then as you get to the 1900s, and then even within the 1900s, go to like the 1960s, for instance, the peak, as you can see right there, the population shot up. And now it's starting to level out a little more as you enter the 2000s, 2014 currently. Uh, but you can see the trend that the population's been growing rapidly in recent years. Okay, so now let's look at the problem. So uh, first, reasons for growth of the population. So uh, some of them are technological innovations, improved sanitation, better medical care, increased agriculture, and then other general factors bringing down death rates. Um, when examining uh, population size and philosophies and theories based on that, an important name to understand and actually know is Thomas Malthus. So basically, uh, to generalize what he proposed is that population size will out grow uh, f a food supply at some point in the future. And he was in like the 18th and 19th century. So that's why it's kind of an impressive philosophy that he came up with and concept pretty much because uh, it's not terribly off base currently and uh, it kind of fits in the current issues. Okay, so also uh, keep in mind that uh, high population growth rates match with poor countries such as say India uh, compared to wealthy countries having uh, lower birth rates. Just keep that in the back of your head. We're going to talk about that later, but just it's something that you should remember. Okay, let's look on effect on environment. So uh, there's something that you need to know known as the IPAT model. So uh, I broke it down here for you. So I, or total impact, equals uh, P, population, multiplied by A, affluence, multiplied by T, technology. So basically what that means is, say you have any country or population of people, you can basically find out their general environmental impact uh, by multiplying their population and affluence of technology. So uh, a good example of this right now that fits into the IPAT model would be China down here. So basically China is a huge population of people becoming uh, very rich very quickly, uh, and they were previously very poor. So that changeover is bringing affluence to a lot of middle class Chinese people who prior didn't have money to spend on things, but now that they have the money they want to spend them. And so consumer goods are being more used and everyone wants certain things. and so. The environmental impact of that's great, as you can see, there's a ton of uh, pollution in China. All right, now let's look at demography, population size and density. So basically, demography is, in a general sense, the study of human population changes. Okay, let's take a look at human carrying capacity. So just as any species, uh, humans actually do have a carrying capacity. The problem is that no one really knows where it is because we continually progress scientifically, and thus the number would keep increasing because we can figure out new ways to support the population. So say I could throw out the number 10 billion is going to be the carrying capacity. I really have no basis for saying that because tomorrow, for instance, somebody could invent something that could prolong everyone's life this much, but it could also change agriculture so that we can grow this much more food in this little of space. So really, it's really hard to pinpoint exactly. Okay, uh, also let's look at how population grows around the world in different ratios and clumps. So there's an uneven distribution of populations around the world, obviously. So therefore, uh, resources deplete unproportionately in certain places. Just keep that in the back of your head. All right, now let's take a look at demography, age structure. So these are what are known as population periods. And you're going to want to have a pretty good understanding of this because there's always FRQs on APs or practice APs or even just in class that uh, you have to discuss these. So basically, there are three basic breakdowns. There's a rapid growth, a slow growth, or a zero, or a, a no growth, or a, even a negative growth. So uh, let's look through these briefly. So uh, the rapid growth, as you can see, it's a very severe curve. So you can think about it like that. That's how you can remember, remember rapid growth, excuse me. 
So down here at this age segment of 0 to 14 years old, that's the largest segment in the rapid growth. So because there are a lot of young people, there's a high reproductive rate, thus there's a rapid growth. Now if you look at a slow growth or just a very stable thing, you can look at the US, Australia, Canada, very stable populations, uh, basically there's a pretty even distribution along the way. Granted, there's a lot of people in this middle bracket here, there's a good amount in the bottom, not that many old people, it all works itself out. Now if you look at zero growth here, or um, negative growth in some charts, uh, basically there's way more older people compared to the amount of younger people in that zero to 14 year old range, and so there's a lower reproductive rate, thus a slower growing population. So that's a pretty general understanding of those, but it should cover what you need. All right, now let's look at birth, death, immigration, emigration, and TFR, or total fertility rate. So uh, this diagram here looks a little confusing, but I'm going to talk you through it. So basically, the growth rate in uh, developed countries peaked in the 1960s. So you can look at things like Europe, very much leveled out there. Uh, and in undeveloped countries, uh, look at Africa right here, it peaked in the 1990s. You can see it kind of started to level out there. So keep in mind that both developed and undeveloped countries have peaked population growth-wise at this point current day. Um, however, the uh, world population continues to grow because um, a larger group of people, a larger population with a slower uh, rate of birth still produces more people than a smaller population does with a higher birth rate. So uh, that's basically why the population keeps growing even though the birth rate um, amounts have peaked in both developed and undeveloped countries. Also, something to keep in mind is TFR, total fertility rate. So basically, what that means is that's the average number of children per woman. Bas that's basically all that means. So um, the replacement fertility rate, or think about that as stability. So in order to keep a population stable, uh, the replacement fertility rate is somewhere around the 2.1 children per woman rate. And granted, there's a little wiggle room there, but it's somewhere in that range. Um, and so if you're uh, above 2.1 children per uh, woman on average, then that's a fast-growing population, and then if you're below that, it's a shrinking population or a slow-growing population. So just keep that in mind. Okay, now let's look at a demographic transition model. So that's what this is down here. And this is, again, something you're going to want to understand. Both of these charts, uh, the population pyramids and the dem demographic transition models, are going to keep coming up, so you should have a pretty good understanding. But they're really not that complicated. Okay, so uh, in a demographic transition model, there are going to be four different parts. So this is basically how it works. You're going to have a pre-industrial um, segment, which is the first. So basically what a pre-industrial part is, that's right here, uh, both the birth and death rate are very, very high. As you can see, birth rate, death rate, they're both way up there. Okay, as you move into this transitional period, that is the period that has the most growth. So the birth rate stays very high up here, but the death rate, this line here, precipitously drops all the way down. And so that could be for any number of reasons. So basically, uh, people are living longer, there's scientific advancements, medicine. People are uh, having a lot of kids, but less people are dying. So that's why there's a lot of growth. Then you move into the industrial phase right here. And so then the birth rate falls and uh, meets down here at the uh, death rate. So they're both starting to go back down, but it's not all the way back down yet. Basically, the causes for this are uh, opportunities for women, which we're going to get into in the next section uh, in a couple of slides here. And then last, you have this um, post-industrial phase here. And basically, that's the birth and death rates stay at the bottom. Uh, they're both low, and that's basically what like the United States is, for instance, at this moment. Okay, now let's look at birth control, empowering women, and family planning planning programs, excuse me. So contraceptives, think of things like condom, birth control pillows, etc. So basically these keep birth rates down and uh, make it under people's control. So that's a good thing. Um, those are trying to be introduced into African countries and things, for instance, that don't have them yet in order to curb population growth. And also for in condoms, for instance, uh, not spread HIV and AIDS and other uh, sexually transmitted diseases. Okay, now looking uh, at empowering women. So equality for women enables them to enter the workforce and pursue education, and that means that they're going to bear fewer children. So in a lot of countries, uh, the way that you can curb um, population growth in such a high amount is that you give women the ability to pursue their own jobs, a career, education, so that they're not just at home having children. 
So basically when that happens, uh, the women are empowered, there's going to be fewer children born as a rule of thumb. Now let's look at family planning programs. So that's basically government instituted mandating um, the amount of children you can have and things along that nature. So China has the infamous one child policy, which basically means that the average family, unless you want to pay exorbitant extra taxes and all these fees, can only have one child in order for them to keep their population at bay. Um, so always keep the one child policy in your head because you can always pull that out on FRQ or a test. Okay, now let's look at poverty, affluence, and HIV and AIDS. So as I mentioned earlier, poor countries have high birth rates, affluent countries have lower birth rates. So just remember that so you don't mix those up. And then uh, HIV and AIDS is uh, limiting growth in Africa. So even though we can go, uh, well, I mean, you can go back and look at a population pyramid. Uh, African countries, for instance, are in that rapid growth segment with like a lot of kids on the bottom and then it moves up in that manner. So even though there are a lot of kids being born, um, HIV and AIDS are really, really cutting into the uh, younger population. And so currently there are a ton of efforts to, uh, you know, help age, AIDS and uh, HIV victims in Africa. But uh, currently that's a big problem. Just keep that in mind. Okay, conclusion. So uh, basically in this uh, chapter eight here, we discussed human population growth and barriers to growth distribution of that growth, the different stages of that uh, population growth, and that basically summarizes it. Okay, in chapter 9, we're going to look over soil and agriculture.